Hello, my name is Matthew Marvin. I also go by the Poker Gypsy. All right, loves, we got to talk real quick because this is stupid and it's different based on every location. Refills. So if I go in there and I buy a drink the first time in your love's cup, it's fine. But if I go in there and get a refill with the same cup, some locations give us crap. They say, oh, you're supposed to bring in your own personal cup for a refill. Okay, first off, so basically I just bring in any cup I want at any time and just fill it up and it could be a refill. How do you know that I purchased the drink the first time if I don't bring this cup back in? Second, if I take a marker and I write my cup or personalize on it, does that qualify as a personal cup? Do I need to spray paint it? All right, guys. So as you can see, I've written my personal cup on this Love's Cup and you can see it's old. Okay, you can see it's been used before. Let's see if they give me any crap about getting a refill in it. So some situations in trucking have a way of making you feel funny. So I'm the first person to get to this spot last night because I shut down early. And now I wake up this morning a little late and I'm the last one to leave. <laughs> Now, even though it's a high demanding job, a lot of hustle and bustle, it still makes you feel like you're lazy. It pushes you to other limits, you know? Gotta love it. All right, guys, so we gotta have this talk. I've asked a lot of people this question, and no one can come up with a technical, solid answer. So my question is, when you take a 30 minute break, do you shut the truck off or do you let it run? Because now, mind you, about how much fuel is right now. Fuel is, let's say, $6 a gallon. Do you let it run and burn that fuel and put idle time on the engine? Or do you shut it off? Do you save fuel knowing that it takes about a cup, cup and a half of diesel to start a semi-truck engine? And when you start the truck up, you're putting wear and tear on your starter. A famous saying in trucking is, pay now or pay later. Do you shut the truck off? and put wear and tear on your starter, knowing that it takes about a cup and a half of diesel to start a diesel engine, or do you just let it run? Put the idle time on your engine and burn the fuel. Drivers also ask, well, is it winter time or is it summertime? Because I mean, look, that makes a big difference as well. You got uh, fuel gelling up. It's not gonna gel up in 30 minutes though. But then if the truck doesn't start, you're also stuck in winter, cold outside. So there it is, we solved the riddle. Just leave the damn thing running. If we're making decisions in the industry like this, then it's probably time to quit. So as you can see, some time has passed since I last shot that video. Those are my thoughts as a solo driver. Since then, I've team driven. We're gonna talk about that later. But until you have team driven, you honestly don't know how much punishment these trucks can take. Like when you're team driving, truck never shuts off. Just leave it run. Alright, so how I fix that transmission fault error. Got under the truck, like so. Oh, and I'm fat, so this ain't easy. So once you get under here, you see an air tank with a little latch to pull. See the cable? You get under there, you pull it, it's gonna make an air sound. Like so. And that puts air through your transmission system. You gotta do that every now and then, or you get your fault, and your transmission won't work as well. Pro tip, also make sure you take your wallet out your pocket, or don't forget that it's in there. Ask me how I know. Got me a vitamin water. Cook me some... Uh, Philly cheesesteak patties from the dollar store and I don't have no damn bread. So what we're gonna do? Steakhouse seasoning. I think I got some lemon pepper somewhere We just finna spice it up and eat it, baby days on the road. Here it is Shippers and receivers y'all want to raise do this so you know where the door latch is Sometimes what they'll do 
is they'll tape it to where the door stays open. So, tape the door to where it stays open, as mentioned, but put a sign on the door that says voice activated. Put a sign on the door that says say open voice activated. Even though the door is open and you can just push or pull it open to get in. <laughs> Drivers will still come and yell that damn door for 20 minutes before they hear the click. Waiting. Can y'all stop being so damn rude while other people are backing into spots? Like, there's so many times where I'm backing into a spot and then a driver just comes, like, right in my way. Like, can I do my job first? Like, it takes, like, all of, like, a few seconds. I understand some rookie drivers will sit there and take forever. But come on, man. We've all been there. It's a common courtesy. Give the other driver the lane while they're backing up. It's so common and it's so stupid. Also, another thing I hate to see out here on the road is people fighting for parking spots. You know, you got one driver maybe turning around or about to get backed in into a spot to park for the night. And it's the last spot. Then some driver just swoops in and just goes head first right into the damn parking spot before he can get in. So, what can you do if this happens to you? So me personally, I always keep those big deadbolt locks. You know the ones for like high price loads? The big thick ones? If somebody cuts in front of you and steals your parking spot, I just go put one or two of those on their trailer, lock their trailer up. And now, if they don't have no bolt cutters... They're going to have to get some. All right. Another common thing I see among rookie drivers is they think that they have to park at a truck stop or a rest area every night. Listen, you're never guaranteed a spot anywhere. Sometimes you got to improvise. It's okay to park on the off ramp. You know the side of the ramp where you have to get on the interstate? Park on that side. I've discussed this already. People are going slow and they're trying to get on the interstate. It's better than them going fast on interstate and coming to the ramp. Because I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, if I park on an off-ramp or an on-ramp, what if someone hits me and dies? Then it's my fault and I go to jail. It's a lot of liability. That's why you park in the safe zones, like where you know people are going to go slow up or down the ramp. Which This is what I'm telling you. Always park where they have to go down the ramp to get to the interstate because they're going much slower. But I've seen a lot of rookie drivers will come in the middle of the night and just park anywhere. Like places that know they're not supposed to be parked. Stop that entitlement. I know you think that, oh, well, if I'm tired, it's a danger to public safety. They can't tell me nothing. <laughs> yeah, not true. You guys are the reason. Well, you guys are one of the reasons why they have came up with this idea to boot trucks. Not to say that there are not scams going on, but I blame you entitled drivers. Like, a little bit. Also, if someone hits a stationary object that's on side of the road, because we all know it's illegal to cross that side of the line, if someone hits an object on side of the road that's 14 foot high, about 10 foot wide, and 80,000 pounds, like, how long do you really think that they was going to live in life anyway? How much longer do you think they was going to last, okay? Darwinism. All right. Next lesson is going to be about health. Artificial sugars. Stay away from these. Now, I know some of y'all's theories is, okay, well, I need to drink more water, but I need it to taste a little like something, you know, have some flavor to it. But let me explain something to you. The two biggest problems in fat truck drivers is heart problems and kidney problems. This is bad for both of those. This will mess you up. Stay away from the artificial sugars and sweeteners. It's no good. Ask me how I know. All right, let's talk about chains for winter. So, switching out trucks, right? Now, every time I get chains, in the new truck I pick up, exactly where they go, right? They go right back in the old truck. If I need chains, I ain't going. That's just how it is. Look, one, two. 
multiple bags. Y'all can keep that.